John Jones is an example that Jesus indeed saves because John Jones made the right move by uh, copying a plea and receiving 18 months probation and avoiding jail time. Enter the arena, the Don Juan Banks. It's either it was an act of God or there was a lot of corruption in this scenario. John Jones stripped of the UFC light heavyweight championship, youngest UFC champion ever, eight title defenses, pound for pound. He's beaten the best. He is the best. And But this young man has some skeletons. He has some demons in the closet. And I swear to you, this man, everything that he has done, has come to the surface. He has proven that he is a fake individual. He's a vile human being. He is a low class piece of scum. But the fact of the matter is, when you look at this entire scenario, John Jones ran a red light. He got into a three car crash, hit a pregnant woman, could have killed, killed the child, grabbed cash, ran from the scene, later on turned himself in after the fact and you know, we was watching the court proceedings and then we found out that John Jones would uh, enter a plea. He said guilty. He got 18 months probation. He avoided jail times and he will be back soon. And what I say about the entire situation is that either is an act of God or the fact that John Jones got the best lawyers in the world. He got the UFC still backing him, whether you believe it or not. Just because he was stripped of the title doesn't mean that they don't want him back in the octagon. And yes, they do. He is going to generate a lot of money if he steps back in the octagon with either Gustafsson or uh, Daniel Cormier. Um, now, you, you can argue, argue that a little bit. Maybe Daniel Cormier, if he wins against Gustafsson, he will fight the winner of Bader or Rashad Evans, but you know how UFC is. They will take it while they can. And if Daniel Cormier defeats Gustafsson, if Gustafsson defeats Cormier, why would they focus on a Rashad Evans? Why would they focus on a Ryan Bader when they can put John Bones Jones, which many people consider him still the champion? And I do too. I consider both of them in the champion. But John Jones is pound for pound. He is the rightful champion. But Daniel Cormier, he is the champion, too. So I don't take anything away from him because I understand, I understand the situation. But see, the fact of the matter is, is the consensus says that John Jones is pound for pound. The consensus says that he is the champion. And this person, Daniel Cormier, is just the interim champion. That's how the people view it. But I view Daniel Cormier as the real champion, and I still consider John Jones the real champion. Because I didn't know what was going to happen in this situation. But the fact of the matter is this. John Jones will be back, and he will be back sooner than later. He's just on probation. And that means he can still fight. He's not in jail, and that was the main objective of his lawyers. And they have, they have avoided jail time. And if he fucks up, that is going to be on him. He is a very fortunate individual. He crashed his 2012 Bentley. He got caught on cocaine. Okay. He, he's, he's been around the block. I heard that he parties heavy. And when he says that, you know, uh, he did this cocaine back in school and then he did it again and he got caught. Don't believe that horse shit, that bullshit, that grade A shit. John Jones is a liar and he's very, very fake. He's a vile scum bag of a human being. I didn't want to see uh, John Jones go to jail because I wanted him to fight again. Now, that is not a legitimate reason. When you commit a crime like John Jones did, unless you got the most sophisticated lawyers in the world, unless you got people who know people, unless you got money, that's the only way you would be able, even with a plea, to get 18 months probation after what he fucking did. He was even gone for a while before he turned himself in. Jesus does save, or it's just corruption. 
Now you gotta think, you gotta say, John Jones, 21 and one, the youngest UFC champion ever, eight title defenses, been in the octagon against the Cormiers, the Teixeiras, the Gustafsons, the Sonnens, the Belfords, the Evans, the Machitas, the Jackson, winning from Shogun. He's done it all. He's he's virtually undefeated. It was those illegal elbows against Hamill that gave him that one, and no one even counts that. And they are not going to even count the fact that if he wins, if he is going to fight the winner of Gustafsson and, and Cormier, if he wins, they're going to count that as the ninth title defense, really. But he'll be a two-time champion because he was legitimately stripped of the title. I think John Jones is pound for pound. I think he is a phenom. I respect everything he does in the octagon. I just don't respect the guy outside of the octagon. I can, it's transparent. I can see right through him. I can see through the lies. I can see through the fakeness. And it's come to the surface. Now, you can't defend John Jones anymore. He has been given more than a second chance. If he fucks this up, it is all on John Jones. He has been given, his career was flatlined, and he's been given a lifeline. He has been resurrected, resurrected from the dead. The defibrillator was put on John Jones, and he has risen. Only John Jones could do something like this. And it's amazing that John is still around after that. Very, very fortunate. I hope he um, is relying on his faith. And, um, you know, and I, and I, and everybody makes mistakes. I hope he really is relying on his faith because I'm a Christian too. And I hope that he is, um, relying on that for him to make the right decisions and avoid temptation and be himself and be able to get back in that octagon and give the best performances that he can. And I don't take anything away from John Jones. When it's when he when you talk about what he's accomplished, um, the diversity of his mixed martial arts. I mean, when he fought Daniel Cormier, he was stuffing Cormier's takedowns. Cormier is Olympian. Um, against Gustafsson, he was able to come back and show the heart. He beat his best friend Rashad Evans, and he's beating the greats. And he said he would be pound for pound. He said he would be the um, Muhammad Ali of mixed martial arts. And I have to say he is in terms of his fighting skill, not in terms of his him as a character. Because he doesn't even compare it when it comes to that. But in terms of his fighting, yes, he can argue that. And I would give that to John Jones instead of giving it to a guy like Floyd Mayweather. Because John has fought all contenders. He's never backed down from anybody. And he has exciting, exhilarating fights. But it was revealed today that John Jones received 18 months probation and has avoided prison time. That's simply amazing in itself. You're hearing my opinion about it. It's amazing. And he cannot let this opportunity pass him by. He cannot fuck this up. He cannot go back to snorting cocaine. He cannot go back to drinking and driving. He cannot go back to living this double lifestyle. He can't go back to that. Because if he goes back to that, he will be in jail next time. And he is going to pay the ultimate price. This is John Jones' final opportunity. At greatness only John Jones can defeat John Jones it is a pleasure to watch a guy like John Jones fight because he's a phenom he's amazing but as a human being his character and credibility and temperament is shit it's low it's vermin it's vile. It's disgusting. I'm dead serious. We're covering UFC 192, and I got Cormier over Gustafsson. And if UFC is going to put Jones next, 
if Cormier makes it through Gustafsson, he is going to fight the most motivated John Jones that has ever stepped in the octagon before. So this is Cormier has to live, breathe, think about John Jones every day and has to live his life as an exemplary champion, which I believe he is, to get ready if he can get because you got to focus on the fight uh, um, ahead of you. In front of you, sorry. You have to focus on the fight that's in front of you, not ahead of you, because you don't want to look ahead. Because if you look ahead, like Gustafsson did with Johnson, and he was saying, Jones, he was saying, I'm not impressed with your performance, like George St. Pierre, and look what happened to him in Sweden. He lost to Anthony Johnson, TKO in the first round. I thought it was a headbutt, but we don't make excuses here. So, Cormier has to focus on Gustafsson, which he is, and then he must wake up every morning, he must eat right, he must train right, he must have an open mind, he must have a mixture of moves, because this is going to be the toughest fight of his entire career, and he knows it, because Jones is back. And he need to give all the credit in the world to God, even if it was corruption and everything else that's behind the scenes, because we know about the criminal. That's why it's called criminal, because it's ran by criminals justice system. That's why so many people who don't have the money go behind bars for a long time. And the people who have the money, because it's about how much money you can pay can get out of situations like that. Us, the common folk like me and you, that work every day and don't get any appreciation, we would never see the light of day probably again if we committed that infraction. That was a pregnant woman and her arm got hurt. What about the child died? I hope John legitimately has remorse for his actions. I hope this time he learns from his mistakes. We're going to go to Yahoo. He avoids jail time with the plea deal. It was a great move. When I saw that he did it, I, I was impressed. Because he wasn't being arrogant. He wasn't being cocky. He wasn't being fake. He admitted to what he did wrong and because he did that he's been given a lesser sentence former UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones is one step closer to becoming a professional athlete again on Tuesday John appeared in Bern Berniello County Court to answer for his part in an April hit and run that left a local pregnant woman with a broken arm Jones pleaded, pleaded guilty to a felony charge of leaving the scene of an accident and was granted a conditional discharge by Judge Charles Brown. Under the requirements of the plea deal, Jones will serve 18 months of supervised probation and be required to make 72 appearances for various charities and speaking engagements with children. After the ruling was handed down, Jones released a statement to the media with regards to the, the, today's decision made by the court. I am very happy to now be able to put this incident behind me. My actions have caused pain and inconvenience in the lives of others. For that, I'm truly sorry and I accept full responsibility. I have been working hard during this time away from my sport to grow and mature as a man and to ensure that nothing like this happens again. I have learned a great deal from this situation and I'm determined to emerge a better person because of it. I apologize to those who were affected by my actions in this incident 
and I am hopeful that I will be given the opportunity to redeem myself in the eyes of the public, my family and friends, as well as my supporters. I am not sure what the future holds for me, but I plan to continue to do work needed to be productive and successful in every aspect of my life. We're on Into the Arena Uncut. And this is where you can find me. And people don't even know where I'm at. There's no publicity. There's no promotion. There's no PR. I'm not doing it for views. And you know I'm very critical of Floyd Mayweather. But I want to I make this to John Jones right now. And I'm not going to go back on my word. I don't care about how much peer pressure I get. I am going to forgive John Jones. And I'm not going to put those videos out on him. If John Jones does something, that is going to be the time I do it. Right now, I forgive John Jones. I hope John Jones relies on his faith. And I hope John Jones is able to return and mature as a man. So I am supporting John Jones and his effort to regain what he has lost. I still love Daniel Cormier. And I'll give a prediction if they're going to fight. And it will not be biased. But John Jones, um, I really hope that he um, repents. And if he truly repents, we will see uh, through the course of his actions the future of John Jones. If he's being fake and he's, he's trying to sneak and do things, he will reap, like Kenny Lopez says, what he sows. Jones was stripped of the UFC title on April 28th, two days after he ran a red light and struck a car driven by Albuquerque, New Mexico native Vanessa Sonnenberg. According to witnesses at the scene, Jones quickly fled the incident only to return a short while later and recover a handful of cash, then promptly flee again. Jones, however, left behind his rental car agreement with identifying documents along with marijuana. After turning himself in, Two authorities a day later, Jones was subsequently stripped of his UFC light heavyweight championship of the world by the promotion, the UFC, as they promised to gather all the facts before making a final judgment on when or if Jones would ever be allowed to return. UFC owners Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta were in court on Tuesday to show support for John Jones. The UFC released a statement shortly after the plea was reached. The UFC organization is aware that John Jones reached a plea agreement with authorities in Albuquerque, New Mexico this morning, stemming from charges associated with motor vehicle accident earlier this year. The release states, as a result, UFC, through Las Vegas-based law firm Campbell and Williams, will thoroughly review the agreement before discussing Jones' possible reinstatement to return to full and active co uh, competition. More information will be available following completion of this review prior to this very pu public fall of grace jones was widely regarded as the greatest fighter to ever compete in mixed martial arts becoming the ufc's youngest ever champion at just the age of 23. jones is essentially undefeated sansa lost to matt, matt hamill 2009 due to a technical overrule interpretation over the entirety of his 22 fight seven year career. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time Jones has been in trouble with the law. In 2012, Jones was arrested on DWI after he crashed his Bentley in upstate New York. And just like Tuesday's ruling, Jones avoided jail time. More recently, Jones tested positive for cocaine metabolites before his fight with Daniel Cormier at UFC 182. In January, Jones was fined by the UFC for the positive test and spent one day in rehab. Let's hope the third time is a charm with John Jones and he's able to get his life back on track with the latest chapter coming to a close. We're covering the UFC this Saturday, UFC 192. Um, my predictions, Daniel Cormier will defeat Alexander Gustafsson. I have Johnny Hendricks over Tyron Woodley uh, in the welterweight division. In the light heavyweight division, I have Rashad Evans over Ryan Bader. In the heavyweight division, I have uh, Ruslan Magomedov 
over Sean Jordan. Um, those are the only fights that I am giving my predictions on. Um, it's safe for you to bet because um, I'm, I've am i done intense research on these fights and I believe all of them will come true. Um, other than that, I can't wait to see you. We're covering boxing also. And thank you for subscribing into the Arena D. Donald Banks.